Hi, I'm Richard Claymont. I'm a painter. Um, I work in oil paints on canvas. That's my primary medium. Um, I also uh, work on board, um, but yes, mostly in oil paints. My preferred materials are oil paint. Occasionally I'll use an acrylic underlayer for my ground. Um, I use a range of brushes, not a lot of palette knife. I'm not a big palette knife painter. I prefer, I like bristle marks in, in my work. Um, so yeah, mostly oils. Yeah, I've lived in the um, Illawarra area now for about 27 odd years. So I've built up quite a relationship with the local environment. Um, where I live here on the coast is uh, particularly inspiring for my work. I love the, um, the, the coastline and the beaches and the rocks, all these things I experience on a daily basis. I'd like to get out and uh, walk every day, so I am building up um, quite a knowledge of my local coastline. Yeah, that's, that's a difficult question, the meaning in the landscape. Um, I mean, my intention is always to inform the viewer about what I'm seeing and experiencing. Um, I guess I'd like to think there's some kind of emotional connection to the landscape, which I uh, convey with, with colour and form and composition. I like to experiment with different palettes to see what really... Um, I don't know, it take, takes you to, to another world. Yeah, abstraction is one of those things that I've entered into fairly late in my career, I guess, and I'm noticing that my work's becoming more and more abstract. It's almost <laughs> like I'm going down a slippery slope and it's almost um, hard to stop it now towards complete abstraction and simplification. I'm just always looking to take detail out of the picture rather than add it. I'm trying to uh, see what I can um, like conjure up in just a single brush stroke, like you know, get rid of as much detail as possible, I guess. No, not really. Um, the Remembered Landscapes series uh, started in response to my childhood memories of visiting uh, Bathurst when I was a, a young kid. Um, although I do a lot of plain air work, I also enjoy just working from my memory. And in that sense, um, being away from the landscape can actually help me um, in the sense that there's no distractions and I'm not constantly trying to make what I'm painting look like something specific over there, so I can really enter into my own imagination to complete the painting. Um, at the moment, I'm working on a series of little streetscapes around Wollongong, which is where I um, work. I like to uh, paint all the trees and the old weatherboard houses and the, um, the streets and cafes that I see. Um, I've just finished a major body of work for Hong Kong that's been sent off now. So that was a, a collection of uh, my Paris work here, um, also some of my Australian landscapes. So that's the um, last big body of work that I've just finished. Um, I guess just a passion for painting. I'm like a fish out of water when I'm not painting. Um, even now I'm feeling a little bit anxious because I haven't painted for about three days. So I'm starting to feel that um, desire well up and it's a good thing. It, it keeps me motivated and um, it, it keeps me uh, wanting to always push the limits and um, find new things to paint, um, find new worlds to create. All that is going on in the back of my mind, so that, I guess, is what sustains me. <laughs> I guess I've gotten used to that over the years. I've been a postie for 28 years now, so it's very much a part of my life. Um, 
it's always been a job that dovetails very well uh, with my painting. Um, usually my deliveries are finished around lunchtime, so I've got the whole afternoon to uh, work on my art. Um, family life, uh, the kids are all grown up now, so uh, it's a wonderful time when I really do have a lot of spare time and uh, life's pretty good. Yeah, so they take um, probably in all maybe up to an hour. We only get five minute breaks at a time, um, so I might have, say, four, uh, a lot of yeah, four or five minute breaks in a day, so that's 20 minutes. So I just keep going back to the same spot and setting up the little easel again. Um, the, the weather might be different, the lighting might be different, so I've just got to improvise a bit. They normally um, take, yeah, up to an hour so. Oh, look, it doesn't bother me. Um, I can't remember who said it, but you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity, so uh, it's a part of what I do. I don't need the painting posty tag, but I'm happy to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm a self-represented artist. Um, the formula that works best for me is where I organise and control all my own exhibitions. I will rent a space and hire people to help me with that, with the promotion and publicity uh, right down to serving the drinks, um, all that kind of thing I organise myself. Uh, I came to the conclusion a while ago that uh, the gallery model doesn't really fit my art practice. Um, I think for me, people like to have a direct relationship with me and my work and I just found that outsourcing my work and my line of communication uh, to a gallery uh, didn't work. Um, from a commercial point of view, uh, selling art is a skill. Uh, not everyone has it. I haven't found a gallery yet that can sell my work as well as I can. Uh, so for me it was a fairly easy decision to be a self-represented artist. I use uh, the big three, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, Instagram is probably the engine room of um, my audience, I suppose. Uh, but there's lots of different platforms out there. It's just a matter of finding the one that, that works best. But for me, um, yeah, Facebook and Instagram are certainly probably the best. Yeah. No, I haven't. I've never, I've never done that. Um, it's not something that's really occurred to me to do for the reason that um, if I want to paint somewhere, I'll just create my own residency. Like, I'll just go there and paint. I've never really seen the point of going through a formal process for that. I guess that's all part of uh, managing my own career and if I have an idea, I like to make it happen and for it not to be dependent on um, some other external authority saying yes or no to that. So I would rather um, yeah, just go somewhere and paint myself and then organise an exhibition from that. Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> Um, I do enter art prizes. Uh, I don't. I don't play lotto, so entering art prizes is the next best thing. Uh, I enter maybe three or four art competitions a year. Um, last year, I was fortunate enough to win the ANL Maritime Prize in Melbourne. Um, that's a fairly major national prize for maritime art, so that was great. Um, and with the money I got from that, I could reinvest that into exhibiting my work in Hong Kong this year. They were. I spent some time at Easter in the Gippsland area. We stayed on a farm at Cardella, which is in the East Gippsland area. From there I had the opportunity to drive around a lot and experience the coastline 
So most of the work that was in the Melbourne show was things that I had seen while I was there in Victoria and done little sketches and small paintings from and then upscaled them in my studio. Um, I, I have an accountant who helps me with all that. I'm not naturally drawn to paperwork, surprisingly for an artist. <laughs> um, I do like to outsource anything that I'm not good at myself to people who are good at it. But the business side, I I do like to like actually run the business myself and deal with uh, people myself. But definitely the paperwork side of things is best yeah left to an accountant. Oh well, there's so much. I mean. Um, if they're going out into the world to be an artist, you've got to work out what you want to do with your art, whether you want to be a hobby artist and just do it for your own pleasure, and that's fine. Um, if you want to take it to another level and be a professional artist, uh, you have to treat your work um, as a business, find an audience, and there will be an audience out there, you just have to locate yours. Um, Build a strong following and don't be too hung up on exhibiting your work until you have a good audience. Uh, there's no point having your work in, in a gallery um, for weeks on end and not having anyone looking at it or having it uh, not selling. That's not a good look for any artist. So if, you, if you're not confident about people turning up to your show and you don't have people coming to look who you know are buyers, it's probably a sign you're not ready to exhibit. Um, so that's one thing. But what really underpins art practice, I think, is just getting better at your craft. Um, it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert in anything. So keep working on getting your 10,000 hours up. Um, become skilled at uh, promoting yourself. I always look at the artistic model as a sort of a um, like a, a three-legged stool in a way. I think there's three things you've got to be good at, and that's the actual art itself. That's a core thing. Um, practice your craft, become better at it, study other artists, um, find a mentor whose art you, you admire. So improve the actual product. Um, work ethic. Show up for work. Um, you've got to be consistent. You've got to. Um, treat art like a job, like you've got to turn up in your studio and commit to painting and you've also got to commit to following through on projects, whether that's contacting people, um, organising shows, making things happen, so you've got to be organised, that's the second thing. And the third thing is uh, the ability to promote yourself. You have to be able to get your work out there in whatever platform you can, whether that's social media, um, if you have contacts in the art world, that's fantastic, most of us don't, so we're starting from a, a standing start. Um, but I think those three things, if, if you're good at those core areas, or even if you're average, you'll do really well. But if you're not good at one of them, it's kind of like the stool that's gonna fall over. That's the way I look at it.